All right, well, good morning. Happy Friday to you. If you don't remember, today actually is Friday. So uh, I know that during quarantine, it can be a little bit confusing about what day it is. So I just thought I would give you that little reminder that the weekend is upon us. Not that it looks any different than what our week looked like, but hey, we can be excited about something. Uh, but that's what we're going to talk about this morning is actually reminders. How many of you know what, uh, how many of you know how important reminders are in your life, right? You got to remember birthdays and um, anniversaries and, you know, grandma's birthday and uh, vet appointments, doctor's appointments, stuff like that. Um, and if you're like me, you've got to set reminders in your phone because there's a lot going on, a lot of little dots on your calendar. And if I don't set a reminder, I'm probably going to forget. Uh, but this morning I want to talk to you about um, uh, the importance of remembering God's promises. That's what, um, that, that's, it's important that, that as we go through life that we remember God's promises. And I want to start off by um, sharing something about God's promises from 2 Corinthians verse, uh, ch chapter 1, verse 20. It says, For all the promises of God in Him are yes and in Him, amen, to the glory of God through us. I want you to repeat after me. All of God's promises are yes and amen. Put that down in the chat. Send some hearts. Send some likes. Let people know that you're alive this morning, that you've got your coffee. Type yes and amen. I want you to remember anything from this devotional. It's that His promises are yes and amen. That means that they are settled, that they are done, that if He said it, it is going to happen. You can take it to the bank. It's guaranteed that in Him, the promises of God, in Him referring to Jesus Christ, His Son, that in Him... His promises are yes and amen. So what's a promise, you might ask? Uh, Webster's defines promise as a noun, as a declaration that one will do or refrain from doing something specific. So it's a declaration. What's that mean? That means you have to either write it down, you have to put it on a billboard, or you've got to say it. You've got to declare it out of your mouth. And a declaration of something that's going to happen in the future, or you're going to refrain from or not do in the future. It's a declaration of a promise. All right. So uh, many of you uh, are very familiar with that phrase, I promise, right? Um, we toss that around a lot, right? I promise this, I promise that. You're getting ready to go to the store and, and your wife stops you and says, hey, honey, don't forget the diapers. And you say, I promise I won't. And sometimes you come back and she asks where the diapers are and you didn't exactly hold up to that promise because we treat promises different than our father treats promises. It's a guarantee when he says something uh, in the word, then it is guaranteed that it will happen. So um, uh, there was this man, his name was Everett R. Storms. Okay, Everett R. Storms. I don't know when he did this research, um, but he went through the entire Word of God and he counted, he wrote down the uh, promises from God to man. All right, so something that God said or something that God promised, something that God declared to man, uh, he wrote down every one of them. And he counted up. 7,487 promises from God to man in the Word of God. 7,487. And um, I was thinking about that, doing a little bit of math, because you guys know me and I have to do the math. But if you took one of those promises and you read it over your own life, one per day, then you would have over 20 years worth of promises to read over yourself, just a, a, a different promise for each day of the year, for 20 years. And, uh, you know, a long time ago when the iPhone came out and uh, they, uh, they talked about this thing called an app, they would say there's an app for that, right? Whatever you need, there's an app for that. And I think we can uh, treat God's Word the same way and, uh, and, and say whatever it is that you're facing in your life. If there's 7,487 of them, there's got to be a promise for whatever it is that you're going through. And I believe God was very deliberate and very uh, uh, focused in uh, revealing His promises in His Word because everything that we go through in life... I guarantee you in God's Word that there's a promise for that. I'm just going to give you a few examples because I don't have time to read the whole 7,487 of them to you. But just for example, if you're lonely, there's a promise for that. It says, Be strong and of good courage for the Lord your God. He is the one who goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. That's Deuteronomy 31.6. If you've got a broken heart, Psalm 34.18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and He saves those who are crushed in spirit. If you got sickness in your body, there's a promise for that. Exodus 23, 25 says, Worship the Lord your God, and His blessing will be on your food and water. I will take away sickness from among you. 
if you don't feel safe, if you, if you have fear or you have worry coming uh, upon your thought life or upon your physical life, Psalm 97.10, there's a promise for that. Let those who love the Lord hate evil, for He guards the lives of His faithful ones and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. There's a promise for whatever you're going through. You've got something going on in your life. If you lost your job, there's a promise for that. If you've got something going on in your marriage, there's a promise for that. If you've got something going on with your kids, there's a promise for that. I guarantee you 7,487 of them written specifically for what you're walking through. Amen. So uh, we know that there's a lot of promises, but where I really want to focus this morning is about the reminders of God's promises, okay? The reminders of, uh, uh, of these truths in our life that God has spoken into our life that we oftentimes forget because uh, we don't read over them, right? James 122 reminds us. He says, don't, be, uh, don't just be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word, right? If we're just hearers of the word, then we deceive ourselves. We've got to be doers of the word. We've got to figure out how to take the promises that, that are written words on a page and get them to, uh, to, to, to be part of our life, to where we're not only hearing about them, we're not only reading them, but they are guiding and directing our life. And that is so important. And I've got a new word I want to teach you this morning to help you understand how to take his promises off words on a page and into your life and into how you walk out this life uh, with Jesus. This word is called MHMF, M-H-M-F, all right? M-H-M-F. If you ever need to remember how to get God's promises to come alive in your life, M-H-M-F. Now, it's not a word, really. It's more of an acronym, but what it means is mind, heart, mouth, foot. Remember, mind, heart, mouth, foot, all right? MHMF, okay? If you're teaching your kids, you've got to figure out how to get God's promises to come to life in their lives, just say MHMF and they'll understand. M-H-M-F. What do I mean by that? It's a process, right? Uh, we all, listen, we all are born with the ability to know God, but it takes repetition to remember the promises that He has spoken over our life. It takes practice, right? Michael Jordan was born the same way we were born, right? But he became so good at basketball because of practice and repetition. Yeah, there's a little bit more ability there than what we have. Uh, but also, he could have squandered that if there wasn't repetition and there wasn't practice. You don't, he wasn't just born good at shooting basketball, right? Hours and hours and hours and thousands of shots, a lot of missed shots, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, mistakes, but a lot of repetition and a lot of practice to get as good as he became at basketball, right? And we're the same way with God's promises. We have the ability to know all, uh, all 7,487 of His promises. And we have the ability, we've been born with the ability to remember all those promises, but it takes practice and it takes repetition. So how do we get it from the page, uh, from the words on the page, into how we walk out our life? Well, it goes like this. It goes mind, heart, mouth, foot. What do I mean by that? Proverbs 23, 7 says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Right? Uh, Matthew 12, 34 says, Out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth will speak. Right? And I want to read this scripture to you because it's the last step and it's so important because we can speak whatever we want. There's life and death in the power of our tongue. But what I want to show you in the scripture is that whatever you speak, that's what you'll be. Whatever you speak, that's what you'll become. It says in Isaiah 55, 11, So shall my word be. Come on, that word be. So shall my word, whatever comes out of my mouth, whatever I think goes to my heart, and out of the abundance of my heart, my mouth will speak, and whatever I speak, so shall that be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and it shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. It's such a powerful scripture. It teaches us how to get things from our mind, right, to our heart, out of our mouth, and whatever we speak, we'll end up walking in, okay? And that's, uh, that's, that's super important for us to remember that. That's why it says in the Word for us to not be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. If we wash our mind in the water of His Word daily, then our, our thought life will be His thought life. We will have the mind of Christ. Our heart will be, uh, will be uh, open and acceptable to what He has uh, downloaded into us, and, and that's what we'll speak. Whatsoever things are in our heart, that's what we'll speak. And whatsoever things we speak, that's what we'll end up walking in. It's so important. So just remember that word, memph. M-H-M-F, uh, mind, heart, mouth, foot. Deuteronomy chapter 6 really brings this to life for us. This is kind of where I want to uh, finish today uh, for God's promises, how to get them to, um, to come true in our own lives. So it says in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 1, it says, Now this is the commandment, and these are the statutes and judgments which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you 
that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess, that you may fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command you, you and your son and your grandson. See, it speaks to future generations. It's not just about us. All the days of your life and that your days may be prolonged. Therefore, hear, O Israel, be careful to observe it, that it may be well with you, that you may be multiply greatly as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you. There's that word promise again. So it's speaking of what God has promised the children of Israel. A land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command to you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. And you shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets before your eyes. Listen to this, verse 9. It says, You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So shall it be when the Lord your God brings you into the land which you swore to your fathers, that Ab- to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you large and beautiful cities which you did not build, houses full of all good things which you did not fill, hewn out wells which you did not dig, vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant when you have eaten and are full. Verse 12, then beware lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. See, this is the importance of reminders that helps us not to forget. If we remind ourselves of God's promises, if we speak Him, if we think about Him, if we store Him, if if we write Him on the tablets of our heart, then we'll end up walking out these things and we will not forget the promises that God has placed in our life. And this is what I want to encourage you in. Um, I know it's the weekends coming up and you've been homeschooling all week and you probably are tired of school and you want to quit, but I'm going to give you a little bit of homework because I feel like that a lot of times we'll just take things that people say or promises or prophecies or anything like that. We'll just take it and we'll just you know shove it in our pocket and hope for the best. But it takes practice. It takes repetition. It takes us going a little bit further in this, not to just read it on a page, but to take it and and make it part of our life. And I want to encourage you to do something. Uh, I'm going to post on our page right now, on our Facebook page, a link to um, a document, a PDF that has 365 promises, one for each day of the year. I want you to take that and I want you, you can either go by that, like uh, go, go day by day with the promises there, or I want you to read over those promises and I want you to make something personal. I want you to make the promises of God. What has God promised you? What has God promised your children? Right? I got a quick story to share with you. Um, at the beginning of this quarantine, I started uh, praying uh, specifically things over my kids. Whenever I, whenever I was getting up and, and whenever I've been getting up and praying, I've been praying specific things over my kids. And the Lord impressed it. He reminded me of a promise that he spoke over my uh, middle uh, son, Luke that he would be an evangelist, that he would win souls. And, uh, and when quarantine started, I, I was uh, praying, Lord, release the evangelistic gift in my son. Release the evangelistic uh, gift. And that's a promise that God spoke over my son, so I was enacting it, right? The, I was declaring it. I was reminding myself of something that God promised me and, and, and Luke. And I got a text today when I was even studying this out. I got a text today that said, uh, Luke just led Mike to, the, to, to Jesus in the kitchen. And, uh, and that's his stepbrother, Mike. And, um, and man, I just broke down in tears because that's a, God, that's a God promise that has come true. And it's something that I reminded myself of and prayed and declared it over my son, who was probably still asleep when I was praying it. But that's how God's promises come to life in our own lives. We declare it. We say, this is what God said, and it's yes and amen. That means it's settled. That's what it's going to be. And I believe that. So make it personal, right? Deuteronomy 6 here talks about writing it on the doorpost, writing it on the tablets of your heart so that when you're walking with your kids or when, you, uh, when you're lying down to go to bed, that you talk about these things, that you remind yourself of what God has promised you. Maybe it's not a land flowing with milk and honey. Maybe it's you know, a, a job or maybe it's a, a house or maybe it's a, uh, you know, whatever it may be. Right? For me, it's that God has promised that my media will shape nations. I have to remind myself of that often. And when I do, it, in, it, it, brings, um, uh, it brings it to life in my own life that, that I see how God is moving and how He promised these things. So uh, just practical ideas. Take some promises that, that you are holding on to right now that God has promised you and make like a phone background, right? You don't have to be a graphic designer to do this. You open your notes app, 
type out a few promises, screenshot it, and make it your phone background. Because I think somebody said that we look at, we see our phone background like close to like 200 times a day or something like that. When we bring our phone out, we see our phone background, right? You might have a picture of your kid or a picture of your dog, uh, you know, something like that. But, but replace it for a while with God's promises. And every time you pick up your phone, it's just like Deuteronomy 6. You're going to see it and you're going to begin to speak it and you're going to begin to declare it. And you're going to be able to walk it out and live it out in practical ways. A fun project with your kids. If you've got uh, something that God has promised over your kids, make posters, right? Just get a uh, poster board from the store and make posters of words that God has declared over them or promises that God has spoken over them and hang them up in your kid's room. And when they wake up in the morning, then they're going to see God's promise waiting on them when they wake up. Just something fun. Um, but I encourage you guys uh, to, to not uh, forget what God has promised, to not forget that Jesus, uh, so many things. I mean, he never leave us nor forsake us. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. Uh, that that uh, by his stripes, by his wounds, we are healed. I mean, you can declare these things over your life, over and over and over, and you'll begin to see it come to fruition in your own life. So I just want to pray. Father, I thank you so much for your promises, for they are yes and they are amen. And I thank you, God, that, um, that, that we can hold on to these things. It's not a chance that it may or may not happen. Lord, you said that it's a promise, and Lord, we hold on to that promise. For you are the, you are the God of promises. You are the God of uh, yesterday, today, and forever. And we know that we can trust you because you're faithful. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you. Pray you guys have a blessed Friday. I'm going to leave you with a song. Feel free to hang out and listen to it if you want. If not, have a blessed Friday. And remember, it's a great day to have a great day. Love you guys. Faithful through the ages God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant And faithful promises time again you have proven you do just what you say though the storms may come and the winds may blow i'll remain steadfast and let my heart learn when you speak a word it will come to pass great is your faith
Yes, I'll still bless you in the middle of the storm, in the middle of my trial. I'll still bless you in the middle of the road when I don't know where to go. I'll still bless you in the middle of my storm. 